Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 20 of Death Note. And yeah, so last episode, Matsuda, Matsuda you baka. <laughs> it was just, it was such a crazy episode. It's so bonkers. But at this point, what else do we expect from Death Note? But I will say the English dub was really humorous. The voice actor for L changing his voice to be like the bro calling Matsuda was really, really funny. And Matsuda's English voice actor is really endearing. He's like a little softy. It's really cute. But I am excited because now we've cornered the Yotsuba group. We've cornered them. We know that Kira is among them. Uh, Weedy and Iber are going to help us infiltrate and figure out who, which one of the seven remaining, not eight, the seven remaining is Kira and then go from there. But so we'll see. I'm pretty excited. We do have some comments though, uh, before we get started. Uh, out, I'll, I'm going to get this right. <laughs> Alora Ser Seriade Neto. My handwriting's awful. So if I got your name wrong, I apologize. I talked about how uh, they commented back in episode 17. They uh, they made a comment saying, I guess you're now seeing Kira in a different light. <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> it was the best joke. That that joke's right up my alley. I felt like CSI Miami. I wanted to put the shades on and be like, yeah, and have the fire around us. That was great. Thank you, Neto. That was absolutely wonderful. Made my day. <laughs> that, that joke was great. Um, Summer... Summer Cutie commented about this idea about color theory, which I thought was really cool. They commented on Patreon about this in for episode 19, in that the colors could actually represent a purpose as far as justice goes. So with red and light, you have the idea of evil with an outward purpose. So light is killing people, but he's doing it for the betterment of those around him, of humanity. So it's still bad, but he's doing it for others around him, not himself. So light is represented with that with red but then characters that are represented in blue are killing for selfish reasons so you have misa who is killing to try and serve kira but then you also have l who seems to want to take care of he wants to fill some sort of void within himself through these acts of justice and people dying because he's just filling this seeming void that he has that we don't know much about. Elle is still shrouded in a lot of mystery, but I thought that was really cool. And then Yellow is kind of innocence. Matsuda has a sense of justice, but it does not involve killing anyone. So Matsuda is kind of innocent. So I like the idea of red representing like a, a selfless evil, blue representing a selfish evil, and then yellow is representing an innocence towards justice that does not involve killing. I thought that was pretty fitting. So Summer Cutie, that was a really cool theory. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, Jackie commented how L is wanting light to be Kira and how it's similar to Moriarty the Patriot spoilers for the next 30 seconds. It's similar to how Sherlock wants Moriarty, wanted Moriarty to be the Lord of Crime. And if you know that dynamic from Moriarty the Patriot, it kind of applies here with L and light and kind of applies to many Sherlock Moriarty, I think, adaptations as we go. I feel like Death Note is in some regard kind of a Sherlockian adapta adaptation, similar-ish. It feels like it anyway. But I thought that was really cool. That was a cool comparison that you made, Jackie. Uh, McRain commented how Light was, before he lost the Death Note and got amnesia, he was pretty giddy at the idea that he was going to uncover L's name and kill him. And then now that he has amnesia, he's all about trying to help L and make him feel better. And I'm like, I wonder what Light pre-amnesia would think about the fact that his post-amnesia self is wanting light is wanting L to be in good spirits and trying to help him. I wonder how you'd react to that. I am very curious, but McGrain, I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, Al Sora, and this kind of relates to um, Julian W's comment. Al Sora talks about how the Death Note brings out the worst in people's personalities. So there's a concept that maybe Light has always had kind of a god complex, but the Death Note brings it out to an extreme. And then you have Misa. Who is who has kind of like extreme clingy love tendencies, and the Death Note kind of like elevated it to like yandere level. So there's that aspect, which I thought was pretty cool. So then the question is, if L or Daddy Yagami got the Death Note, what is their worst personality trait, and would it be like you know expanded or exaggerated? For for Daddy Yagami, he's all about like his sense of justice is you know I I'll kill you and everyone else to spare everyone else too. So I feel like he would be kind of on the same level of light like. Daddy Kira. <laughs> like, I feel like that would be it. That would be Daddy Yagami, Daddy Kira. And then I feel like with L, I don't know. I don't know. L's worst trait is he's kind of, he's similar to Light. He's kind of stubborn. 
But I don't know. That would be very curious. So I don't know how to take that. But I'll swear that was a really good comment. And then finally, uh, Julian W. talks about how, you know, Light, even though he was in jail and even though the deaths had stopped, the first set of deaths that Rim had the guy, whoever, whichever Yotsuba guy it is, write out, those were all planned out by Light. So technically... Uh, light as Kira did did commit those crimes, Elle wasn't wrong. <laughs> it was still Kira as Light that was committing that first set of murders. It's just afterwards, once Rim gave Yotsuba the death note for them to keep, then they started acting on their own accord, and that was not tied to Light. However, I do think it's really important to note, going into this episode and into this amnesia arc, as it were, that if Light... And it gets complicated, though, because Julian's comment was like, well, you know, Ryuk and them could have just burned the death note and then we wouldn't have had any more murders. And I'm like, this is true. Like, could have just gotten rid of the death note. Like, giving the death note to Rim to give to the Yotsuba company is all to set Yotsuba up so that L and Light can crack the code and pan Kira on them and then that'll let Light and Misa go free. Like that, Light is playing 4D chess and that's like his big chess game is that he's like, I'm gonna give this death note up and forget about it, but I know how smart I am and I'm gonna be able to help L crack the code and figure out it's Yotsuba. We'll frame it all on them and then Misa and I will get out scot-free. Now, the question is, did Light have Ryuk destroy the other death note? Once this is all done, said and done and they're free to go, you know, Light could just go on about his daily life and not be involved with Ryuk or the other Death Note ever again. But I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think we're going to finish out the 17 episodes we have left with that because it seems like we're pretty close to cracking the Yotsuba case. I feel, I feel as if we're pretty close. Like maybe another couple of episodes and we'll have that done. And then it's like, where do we go from there? No idea. So, and I don't want to know, so no spoilers. But I, I I, feel like if Light truly wanted to rid himself of the Death Note and truly shed Kira from him altogether, there was a way to do it. Maybe he couldn't do it without getting the Yotsuba group involved, but it'll be interesting to see after post-Yotsuba what Light ends up doing. That part's going to be interesting. So, we'll see. But those are my comments. Did it under 10 minutes. I feel proud. <laughs> so I poured some coffee and I'm like, I'm ready for some Death Note. Episode 20 and to see what's going to happen. So we are going to start episode 20 of Death Note. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. I think I'm still reeling from that OP. <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> Thank you for not spoiling me. That was the best surprise of my day. And I'm like, oh my God. So this is not really Attack on Titan spoilers, but I do have to say before we start that if you've not seen season four of Attack on Titan, um, just kind of, I'll put an obligatory spoiler thing up here, but, and when it's gone, y'all can stop you can go back to your regularly scheduled Death Note discussion. But I remember when I was starting this, when I was starting season four of Attack on Titan, um, season four, the two OPs for it are very similar to this OP in different ways. I remember when I was starting season four of Attack on Titan, it's like the first three seasons have a very like, like patriotic kind of like gung ho, like war song kind of vibe to them. And then season three is, is a little bit different, but still, still has that same kind of upbeat to it. And everybody was saying, oh, wait till you get to season four's OP for Attack on Titan, because it's going to be like Death Note, the second OP for Death Note, where it just goes balls to the walls bonkers. And I was like, uh, and at the time, I knew I was going to watch Death Note eventually, and I was like, hmm, okay. And I, I asked people, I was like, don't spoil me anymore, I'm going to watch Death Note, so I don't want to know any more about the second spo about the second OP, but yeah, I could see where Isayama, the bands that Isayama hired to do the OPs, drew inspiration from this, from this OP, not, not only in the sound, not only in like the screaming death metal, but also in like the visuals. There's some visual choices in this with Death Note that I'm like, Attack on Titan season four OPs did the same thing. How interesting. So it's it's almost like the two OPs for Attack on Titan season four are kind of like a marriage of, of this Death Note OP. It's kind of crazy, but I was like, huh. But God, freaking the, the end where it's like, are you worried? I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> should, should I be? 
So I have a feeling I'm going to be breaking down the lyrics of that OP episode by episode as we watch it, but I'm on board with it. I'm like, I don't listen to screaming death metal a lot, but I'll be honest, the second Attack on Titan uh, OP, I've listened to a lot, so I'm I'm here for it, but that's the end of those spoilers. So yeah, basically the OP is madness, and I'm going to be reading the lyrics for it episode by episode as we watch it. It is not the the cool music that the first OP is, but I, I'm for it. I'm like here for it. It's so bonkers. The laughing, the laughing light face is the funniest damn thing I've seen all week, and I absolutely love it. I'm like, yes, please. So, but yeah, I'm going to skip the OP for now because we are going to, we're going to go back to it. It feels like an extension of the first OP, which is kind of cool. It does feel like an extension of the first OP in that there's roses and there is some shots of light in the outfit he wore in the first OP. Ryuk's here. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just, and light, although light looks really sad in this OP, and like kind of panicked. And so I'm a little worried about that. I'm a little worried about it. So, hmm, I don't know. And it ends with two blue roses beside the death note in a puddle. So I'm like, are those two blue roses, are those supposed to be Ryuzaki and Misa? Are they gonna die in this? I don't want that, but I don't want spoilers either. So, <laughs> so anyway, God, this episode was kind of bonkers. Kind of bonkers. I had to bring Whiteboard Coon out because I want to break L down. L, as many of you have commented over the last several episodes, L has an obsession. He does. He has an obsession with trying to figure, not only to figure out who Kira is, but to prove that it's Light and Misa because he knows that it's Light and Misa. And it's like, L, you are correct. Yes. But like, dude does not know how this game works. And it's like, it's like he's figured out how to win the game, but he doesn't know the rules of the game. So it's kind of, it, it's a little bonkers. And there's several aspects of this episode that I'm like, oh God, whew, we're going to talk about this. But ever since episode 16, like 16 through ever since Light Got Amnesia, L's gotten a little bit more unhinged. And this episode kind of, he reaches a breaking point where he puts all the sugar in the cup. I was like, oh, he's, he's having a breakdown, but this is fascinating. So I, I I like L. I like L. And a lot of people have been like, but here's the thing. I like light too. He just likes likes the bat. It's funny. It's like, you know, I like L and I like light. They are very flawed characters. And I like pointing out their flaws, but I like them as characters. They are very endearing and they have likable qualities. Even when light is an egotistical god complex maniac, it's to the point where it's he's so damn charming it's endearing and you're like I just you you may think he's wrong and you may want him to get found out by L but you still like him as a character and that's kind of how I am with L. L is flawed he's not perfect and L like light has his downsides but I still really like him as a character and then Misa I she's just god Misa in this Ugh. this whole episode is just I, we gotta break it down. It, there's a lot going on in this episode, and it's surprisingly, there's a lot going down and nothing gets accomplished in, the, in this episode. I guess some things get set up. It's another setup episode, which is interesting, but they're, they're setting up to go and bust the Otsuba group. And so, I'm so, this is so curious. So, there's only seven out of the eight, which we, the one guy died. They probably killed one of them, and Elle's like, yep, they probably killed him. And so for the advancement of the, for the further advancement of the Otsuba group, who shall we kill? And everybody's like, everybody except L has a visceral reaction where they're like, oh, even light. They're like, see, it's like I said. Mm -hmm. And then, and then L says, this is bad if things continue like this. Hmm. So the question is what L is talking about in this episode? What, what cannot continue? So let's put L, we're going to put L, uh, L, I can't do the nice fancy writing, but AKA Ryuzaki. We're gonna put him front and center in this. Okay, so we clearly have problems and we're gonna talk about those in this episode. There are clearly problems that L is concerned about. So he's like, this is bad. So this whole phrase, this is bad. And if things continue, like this. I, the thing of it is, 
is that I think the, the, the creator wants you to think a certain thing, but we, the audience, kind of, there's multiple ways that you can view certain lines from characters. And I think that on the one hand, on the one hand, you could think that this is like, oh, this is bad. If Yotsuba, if Yotsuba continues, then more people will die. That's one way you can look at it. You can say, well, if this is bad. If we don't stop the Yotsuba group, more people are going to die and it's Kira is going to continue to be on the loose. So you can think that way. Um, or you can think of it another way in saying, because that's when Matsuda's like, wow, they're really, they're talking about just killing people out in the open. We can totally bust them. And, and Chief Yagami or Daddy Yagami and Light are all about it. And Ry Ryuzaki could be saying, okay, no, this is bad because if, if we are not careful, if we are not careful, and here's the big thing, thorough. If we're not careful and thorough, then we could make a mistake, make a mistake. And what he's afraid of is to be back at square one because he's already gone through that one time. He's gone back. He's gone through that one time with Light and Misa. Wasn't a fun time. And he's like, nope, if we don't play our cards right and if we're not thorough and have proof, then they could pass those powers of Kira on to somebody else and then we are back to square one and we have to start all over from scratch. The super group won't be responsible anymore and we have to start all the way back. And it was like, I can't, my heart can't take that anymore. So there's that option. Or, as we also see in this episode... Elle is also functioning under the guise that this is bad because if we catch, if we catch Yotsuba and do not have proof that Light is Kira, then he and Misa will be free. I fully believe that this is this is the big one and the other two are kind of following suit. I think it goes in order of this is his main concern, this is his secondary concern, and then this is his third concern. Now, you may say his third concern is that more people will die. Shouldn't that be his first concern? The answer is yes, but, <laughs> but that's not how we can view Elle in this case. This is where that moral grayness comes in. Because I think that Elle's biggest concern is that if... He thinks at this point that this entire Yotsuba thing is a big ploy that Light has cooked up as Kira and that once the once the Yotsuba group is pinned as being Kira, then it's like, well, problem solved, case closed, L, you can go back to solving some other cases and he won't be in charge of the Kira case anymore and then Light will get the death note back and go back to being Kira. And nobody will know the wiser. And Misa will be off the hook. And L doesn't want that to happen because he is sure that Light is Kira and he wants to catch him as it. And so and the scary thing is he's right. Light does have a plan. I think so too. I think Light does have a plan to get the Death Note back and go back to being Kira. I think that that's absolutely the case, but Light doesn't realize that yet because he's got amnesia. But I think that L's absolutely right. Everything L says in terms of Light being Kira, he's like, nope, that's pretty much correct. And so... I think that that's his main concern is that this is bad. If we catch them now, it's it's going to get Light and Misa off the hook, but then they're going to go back to being Kira. And then the other thing is if we're not careful, the powers could transfer somebody else. And so then we're back to square one. And then on top of that, yeah, more people will die. <laughs> so it's like, but again, yeah, I'm not going to shy away from the fact in this show that if something comes out and people are like, oh, well, you let him get off scot-free. No, I think L at this point which is interesting, is kind of just as stubborn and just as his his goals are a little bit off kilter now because of this whole situation with Kira and the Death Note than they normally might would be. Um, that yeah, he is, he is sacrificing a lot of people's lives for the sake of trying to solve this case. Mm -hmm. Try, it's just that idea, that concept of justice. And the concept of justice justice and the cost right justice and the cost and then also perspective who is right 
who is wrong, who has the power to be right and wrong. And so that's that's kind of what the series kind of its bread and butter is. And now we're seeing these two sides of justice. You have Light and you have L, and they both function in similar ways and have similar thinking, but their sense of justice is honed in a very different way. So it's fascinating, but yeah. So if we continue like this, things are not going to be good. So yeah, before that, they have several topics in which they discuss. And I want to talk about this because this is fascinating. They're like, Hattori is the guy that died. And they're like, that couldn't be helped. And the one guy says, to be honest, I'm relieved that he's dead. He, Kira has clearly shown what will happen if to whoever tries to leave these meetings. So he's not Kira that we know of. And he seems like he's pretty loyal to the cause. So clearly he does not want to be killed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And the one guy nods. He's like, yes, I think we all know what Hattori's death means. That take it to heart. Okay, next. And then they just move on. And so I want to make note that everybody's kind of like, Matsuda and Light and Daddy Yagami are like, whoa, they just totally moved on from when their associates dying. Like it was like, okay, next business item, right? They did not seem to care that he just died. And Chief Yagami kind of comments on it. He's like, one of their colleagues just died, and that's it? And I like the concern. This episode's kind of weird with the animation. There are some moments in this episode where the animation is really, really good. And then there's other moments where it's not good. <laughs> and it's funny. And I was like, oh my god. There's some moments that I'm like, I'm going to be putting some screenshots of that in the Discord. Because <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But, okay, we're going to um, we're gonna put old Daddy Yagami over here. Daddy Yagami, he is appalled at their indifference at the Yotsuba group. And I'm going to put Matsuda in with him because he kind of floats in the same boat throughout this episode. And then I'm going to put Light, obviously in red, uh, over here. Put Light over there, and Light is also appalled at the Yotsuba group, at the Yotsuba indifference. But that's kind of the power of the Death Note, is that it does make you, like, really indifferent and really insensitive to all the deaths that are being committed. And the crazy thing about it is, is that I wonder if it's sort of, like, not only affecting the people holding it, but affecting those kind of surrounding it as well. Because L seems kind of affected by it. He's become obsessed with this case, right? Even though he doesn't have the death note. And L just staring at them. And they're like, just $5 million, $5 million just for this report, right? Like, there's nothing good in it. But the one guy says, now wait, there's some important information at the end. So they are given, they're throwing a bone to the super group to keep them invested in L, to keep them invested in Coil, right? And they're like, why? And the one guy says, at the end of this report, it says that he warns that we shouldn't take L's existence lightly. And that, and okay, so the guy with the nervous eyes, he was one of the guys that like cornered Matsuda. He seems rather suspicious as Kira because he like seems super shady and like really nervous. So, but it's funny. It's like, if you're Kira, why would you be nervous? So interesting if you continue with your current pace of killing. And it pans to him, so maybe he's Kira? Hmm. For Yotsuba's benefit, every week on Fridays and Saturdays, L could connect you with Kira. So yeah, they basically threw a little bait, being like, we're on to you, trying to like flush them out, right? Interesting. And so they all kind of look and stare at that. And then this guy, this guy that kind of looks like Light with the glasses and funky hair, I think he was in the OP, so maybe he's Kira. Maybe. But they bring up a good point about how Kira could be none of them. So, or it could be multiple people. So this is where it's getting, getting, gonna get kind of crazy, right? It's impressive that Coyle has figured out what we've been doing. Uh-huh. And so he's like, at any rate, we should stop killing every weekend and they're like it's like they're confessing yeah you got it all on videotape and then chief yagami is like as long as we have this video that we could arrest all seven of them and then and then l's like this is definitely bad so yeah i and now when you say definitely bad i think like forget that part here it's literally one of these two options mm-hmm 
And so he's like, Kira isn't very flexible either. It'd be nice if he killed at various times throughout the week. And the fact that Coyle noticed this makes it dangerous to continue killing at our current pace. From now on, we should be even more careful and make sure no one ever finds out. And then he's like, and then they're like, now on to the main topic. And who shall we kill? They're like, that. that's all it was. And everybody's kind of stunned by that except for L, right? Because it's just so nonchalant. It's like a business meeting, right? So let's um, put up here that L... L has baited, he has baited the Yotsuba group, this is pretty important, into talking about how the killings work. So L is doing another thing here. He is in doing surveillance on the Yotsuba group and figuring out what they how they're doing it, he's gathering information about how the death note works. And he doesn't know it's a death note yet, but he knows that he's finding out how this killing power works. He's learned that they can control the time that they kill, that they can like alter the means in which they've died, that they can make sure that that is, that it, the people die by accidents or something. That's information they didn't have before. So another reason why L may not want the Yotsuba Super Group to be arrested just yet is that he is wanting to use them to find out information about how the death note, about how the powers work, and in turn find out about the death, the death note, so that he can pin it back on light, but so that he can solve the case. Because right now, L's biggest detriment in this entire case is that he doesn't know the rules of the game. He doesn't know the rules of the death note. He doesn't even know that there's a death note. He doesn't know the rules of the Shinigami. He knows none of the rules of the game. He's just trying to figure out as he goes how it's played. And so I could see why L would maybe want for them to not arrest the Otsuba group yet. He's like, give us a month. Let's find out more information about how this power works and then, and then arrest them. But that's not really the primary goal of Daddy Yagami and Light and them. They just want to arrest Kira and get it over with. And Light or L wants to know the mechanisms. Like, how does this power work? So... It's, it's crazy. I do like that they have elf insurance. That's really funny. The elf insurance is kind of funny. It's cute. And he's like, this will hurt Yotsuba, but many other companies' customer base. And they're like, agreed. These people from L should, elf should die by accidental deaths. No objections. And Light and Chief Yagami are kind of like floored. They're like, Light says, what is this? And L's like, how can they do this so easily? And L is like, he's got like white chocolate and all this stuff on his plate. And he's like, another person is Centaro Zen Zenzai, another member of the Kugisawa group. And he's just pouring chocolate syrup over it. Like, they're appalled. And L's like, yep, this is just how it rolls. Mm hmm. Hmm. And the thing of it is, L's dealt with some pretty ridiculous criminals because he solved the world's hardest cases. So he's probably used to like extreme things like this. And knows that people usually that are at this point of murdering people, they don't, they're pretty insensitive to it. They do not have any sensitivities to such actions, right? And so he kind of, that's, I think he's not surprised by how indifferent they are. But Chief Yagami is, and so is Light. Zenzai suffers from high blood pressure. So it's possible to have him die of a stroke at a designated time. And as he like takes a bite of that sugar, he's looking. So yeah, he's learning about how these powers work that he didn't know before. He's gaining information he did not have before when he was trying to figure out about Kira. And Light is just like, he looks so, he looks so surprised by how easily they can kill. Like how, how unaffected they are. And it's such a good face. Like, the animation's great. And he's like, Kira, accidental death, death by illness. He's like, designated time of deaths. He's like, it's as we thought. There's no mistake. So, yeah, it's just, it's proving their theory, right? As El's stirring his chocolate. And he's like, no, unfortunately, we can only say that after the people, those people they named die. So, yeah, El's like, we can't prove anything unless they're dead. Like, it could be just coincidence. There's no physical proof that what they say is going to happen until it actually happens. 
He's like, it'd be great if we could just arrest them on theory, but, but because one thing they don't know is that once the name is written in the death note, that death is going to happen. So L is kind of predicting like, we don't know how these powers work until the people die and we can actually have proof that it happened. We have to tie up when they said that this would happen with their actual deaths. So, and we'll talk about that when we get to the phone conversation with the one guy. And so, yeah, I like that he's talking about this and Chief Yagami and Light, like Light looks frustrated at L. He's, he's frustrated at L in this moment, which is interesting. And Chief Yagami's frustrated. And like, as long as we continue to monitor what these seven say at their meetings, then their actions, whether and whether they name, the people they name die, will definitely catch Kira. So like we have to have proof that these seven men, just because they said that the deaths would happen, did they actually happen? So once we wait and see, we'll be able to catch him. And he has like the one, two, three, four, his, he had seven, seven sugar cubes stacked on top of his spoon. One of them is red, like for Kira. Oh, that's good visual symbolism. I like it. I like it a lot. And he goes to take a bite of it and then they all object and he's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that picture of him, like, in mid, in mid choke is great. Again, some of the animation in this episode is just ridiculous. He did manage, did he manage to eat the, did he eat the pink cube? I want to see. He did eat the pink cube! His lizard tongue came out and he ate the pink cube! He ate the Kira cube. All right, game over. Ryuzaki wins. He's like, what is this? Both of you in unison? He's like, I don't like you both working together. What is this? Before you weren't doing it. I don't like it. It's creepy. And Light's like, I can't go along with that idea. He's like, it's wrong. And his dad's like, yes. And Elle says, here it comes. Like he believes, he believes that Light is acting. So he believes, he believes that Light is acting all goody goody. Kind of. <laughs> We talked about this in the comments. Uh, there were several people in the comments that were kind of talking about this. But the, the idea that Boy Scout light, which is the light we have now, is still kind of a persona. It's not really like when light zoned out in the last episode and was kind of having these thoughts about, you know, would he actually kill people? That was kind of more of like the real light. And that this, this one light could actually still be like a makeshift or you know, facade that light's putting on. And I think Elle fully believes that that's the case. He thinks that light's acting. Because he's seen how light has been before, and this does not seem like the light that is from before. And he's like, you seem to plan on catching Kira by allowing these seven to continue to murder, but I can't let them. And Elle's just like shoveling in sugary foods because he's stressed, <laughs> you know. And he's like, that's right. Daddy Yagami butts in and says, it's apparent that these seven are committing murder. And I'm like, well, they say that they are, but they haven't given you actual names. So I'm kind of on board with L for at least, at least the part where it's like, we don't have anybody's specific names and we don't have specific time of death or incidents. He's like, we don't have enough info to actually get these guys on murder. Just because they say they're going to murder somebody does not mean that they're going to. He's like, we need proof that it's happened and then we can bust them. So as morbid as it is that those people have to die, we can't really prove they're Kira unless they do. And we have on tape the time and death that they said they're going to die to match up with the autopsy. He's like, we can't, we can't really book them on just hearsay, right? They probably could get a good lawyer and get out of it. So I kind of get where else coming from, but I get why Daddy Yagami and Light are all gung-ho about like, can't we prove them by this footage, right? And L, like, setting down the thing, he's like, this is problematic. He's like, if we caught them now, everything we've done until now will go to waste. So that logic there is lining up with more of the proving that light is Kira line, right? That, that's more proving there. And he just looks like a zombie as he says it. And he says, L will, Elf will be three weeks later. We'll ask Kira to have Zenzai killed this weekend. So they really only pushed back the Elf murders a week and Zenzai, Zenzai got moved back like four weeks. So good for him. <laughs> good for him not dying for another month. And they're like, no objections. And he's like, 
if it's this weekend, there's not much time left. Like, they just want to solve it lickety-split. Which, again, Chief Yagami does have some motive to that, too. He wants... He wants to free Light. Which you can't blame him. It's his son. Of course he wants to. But he's just like, he's like, do you know the cell phones? He asked Light if he knows the cell phones of those seven. And I find it funny we have the seven left, like the seven deadly sins. And of course he's like, yeah, I do. He's like, any one of them will do. I'm like, you're going to call right now when you don't have any concrete evidence of the surveillance video that, of them just talking about it? I mean, that's not enough to book him as Kira. I do, I do agree with Elle on that. I'm going to call one of the seven and try to stop the murders. And Elle's like, please wait. He's like, if we do that just three days after Ibra has made contact with them, then it's going to look suspicious. We're going to seem suspicious. And it's highly likely that we won't be able to determine who Kira is. He's like, we can't just call one of the seven and be like, hey, are you Kira? He's like, we've got to have more planning this. He's like, you all are, everyone is desperate. And I'm going to put that up here that everyone, everyone in this episode is desperate to solve the case. Yep. Everybody's desperate to solve it. Mm -hmm. Right? He's like, we've come this far and we'll have to start over again. Yeah. And he's not wrong. He's like, if you call one of the seven now and it's not Kira and Kira finds out, we don't know how this power works exactly. It could, they could instantly transfer it to somebody else outside of Yotsuba. And, La and Elle's like, then we have to start from square one all over again. And I'm stuck with light for eternity. <laughs> so he's like, let's not be hasty. Do not be hasty, Master Pippin. You know. And then I like that he looks down at the coffee like he realizes he didn't put enough sugar in it. He's like, mm, no. And he's like, to catch Kira, we need proof. Yes, irrefutable proof. The L's like, I couldn't get Light and Misa because I didn't have that proof. He's like, we can't catch Kira unless there is proof. And I like that Kira look, that Light looks back at the screen. He's like, Ryuzaki, if Kira is among these seven, then... It, and I like that L looks over to him and he's just like, yes. It's like, he's so depressed. Sad cake L is still here. That if we call one of them then there's a chance in seven that person's Kira, which is not wrong that that math checks out. And he says, at most, I would think that there's two of them. Two of them are Kira. He looks very cat-like in that moment. Like L has a very cat-like look to him. He's like, well, I think there might be two Kiras because we had two Kiras of you and Misa. So there could be two of them here too. So he believes that there could be two Kiras. That two of them are Kira. Which, now that I think about it, we've had a lot of rules the last couple episodes that have been talking about multiple people holding the death notes. And multiple times that's worked. So maybe that's why the show is giving us these hints that there are multiple people that can be Kira. Hmm. It's two out of the seven. Hmm. And I do like, I do like Elle's cat face there. It's really good. I'm going to go back to it real quick. Yeah. He looks very, like, sometimes the animation in this episode is really good, and they make Elle look good, too. And so Light's like, well, let's call and find out. He's like, if we're prepared to let them know that the investigation is catching up to them, then let's risk those odds. Which is curious, because Light, Light gets kind of in a gambling mode in here. So Light is, he starts to gamble, he starts to gamble like L. L made the move to be bold back when he was trying to figure out that Light was Kira, and now Light's being bold and making a gamble very similarly, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and L's like, I'm going to borrow the name L Ryuzaki from the sound of the conversation, the one who seems to be the least likely to be Kira and who carries some weight on the board is the guy that's named... I like that he says, I like that, that Matsuda says ooey and they say Namikawa. And he's like, Ugh, yeah, don't give Matsuda, don't give Matsuda the phone. And so he's like, fine, use this. They can't trace or tap it. It also sends faxes. 
<laughs> if you're wondering why that phone looks so weird, it is also a fax machine. I know it because I'm ancient, so there we go. And so Namikawa gets the call. We killed the executives of rival company one by one. I mean, to be fair, they did just confess that they killed the rival company's executives one by one. So they did just confess to those murders. So I do see where Chief Yagami is like, we could book them on that. But proving that they're Kira mm, and not a fake Kira, it's going a bit far. Let's kill them and split their stocks. Yeah, they are saying some pretty damning evidence. That's true. And so he answers the phone. Reje Namikawa. All right. He says, you're the VP of Yotsuba sales department one, aren't you? And he's like, yes, I am. And? And they're like, listen and I'll res and respond as you see fit. I'm L. Ah! I, the fact that it's light talking and that he's L. Oh, my God. And he says the I'm L line. Oh, my God. That I'm L. Ooh, buddy. I just, I got chills. And then I love that the, I love the camera work pans and gets all crazy several times in this episode. But he's like, I've planted cameras and wires in that meeting room and I'm recording footage of your entire meeting. He's like, the op opening topic was Mr. Hattori's death and now you're deciding who to kill. And I like the L's looking at light like, what are you doing, man? Old buddy, old pal. He's like, isn't that right? And he's like, he's been watching everything. He's like, if you aren't Kira... Or if you aren't someone who can directly contact Kira, then let's make a deal. And he's like, what? And so he's like, delay the death of Elf's president and Mr. Zenzai for one month. That shouldn't be difficult for you. And yes, I see. And if he's like, if we want to randomize the deaths. Yes, go on. Just throw darts at a, at a calendar. So while they're having this conversation, he's like, well, we could randomize the deaths and just throw darts at a calendar and figure out when. Like, they're just talking about it like it's nothing. And then Light says, if you do this and cooperate us from now on, your crime, no. Everyone other than Kira will not be charged under the belief they were threatened by Kira into participating in the meetings, which is genius. He's like, I see. He's like, my only option is to join L. Mm -hmm. No, I'll be cured, killed if Kira finds out that I've sided with L. Oh, so yeah, he's not Kira. What should I do? He says, if you reveal this conversation, it'll cause a panic. So there would be no advantage for you. Everyone will be caught. My, my goal is to go one-on-one -on -one against Kira. Like, it just sounds exactly like Light it, or like L. It sounds exactly like it. And Ryazaki's over here like, mm hmm, okay. And like, he even holds the phone up for him. If L wins against Kira, you'll be acquitted. If L loses against Kira, then you'll carry on with your luxurious life. So it's a win-win for you. Or you can remain a spectator and go along with either side. Whoever wins L or Kira, it's no loss to you. But it would be a loss if you were caught right now. So he like basically just gives him like, this is your only option. So, and the guy's like, he already knows the answer I'm going to give. That's all. He's like, okay, on Monday. Mm-hmm. And he's like, who is it from? He says, a subordinate of mine messed up and I'll have to fix it on Monday. Ha <laughs> ha. And then they ask him to get back on topic. And now the one guy with the crazy eyes, he looks really nervous over at him. So if there's two Kiras, I wonder if it's the two brunettes. I wonder if it's the crazy eyed guy and the guy with glasses that kind of looks like light. If it's those two that are Kira that are working together on this. Hmm. I don't know. They seem really conspicuous. He's like, let's give Coyle one month to discover Isle's, Isle's identity. If he doesn't, we'll be forced to kill them at various dates. Uh-huh. Next, we'll give him another month and repeat the process. And once we've dealt with L, we can go back to two or three people a week. In other words, we should make dealing with L our first priority. And then the one guy with glasses is like, yes, if we kill L, we'll have nothing in our way. I don't know. It's like, it's like the best game of like 10 Indians to be like, how do we figure out? Like, how do we narrow it down? Who's, who's the killer? Interesting. Hmm. Until then we should be careful. And they're like, yep, sounds good to me. And they all seem to be pretty much in agreement about it. We'll give Coyle a month. No objections. 
And he's like, L, that should satisfy you. All right, but they're going to hold the meetings weekly. So there we go. And so, yeah, it went well. And they're like, yep. He's like, you really are amazing, Light. Like, L's like, hmm, you really are amazing. You, not only did you delay the killing, but you may be able to get information from Namikawa. So he's like, furthermore, it looked like something that I would do. You thought of it faster than I did. Yeah, yeah, Light basically was acting very much like Ryuzaki in that moment, which is hilarious. He's like, at this rate... Mm-hmm. And so that's when he comes up with the idea that if I die, you become L. Mm-hmm. So he has this idea that if if L dies, Light would take over as L. He would become the most well-known detective in the world. The funny thing about that is if Light... If there was no way that Light could become Kira again, if there was no way that Light could find the Death Note again, could be reunited with Ryuk, if that was totally off the table, then that actually, it kind of is like, like, a, like a Zorro thing where like the mask transfers on and passes from person to person, right? So, and I wonder if that's what's happened with L. I wonder if L and that moniker of L is something he inherited from someone else. Someone else gave him the name L. Kind of like the Death Note and how it works. So I wonder, you know, it's on the surface that seems like a great thing. Like, oh, if you die, Light could become the famous detective that you were. And that sounds really sincere until you figure out why L is doing this, why he's saying this. You could become the successor to the L name. And then I like that Light's like, why are you talking about such morbid things? He's like, we have a month to figure out who Kira is. He's like, you're going to be fine and gather evidence against him. You're going to be okay. He's like, the challenge is just beginning. He's like, come on, L. Like, you know, Light's trying to encourage him, make him feel better. And he says, but you're the one who first noticed Yotsuba. It's like, you're the one who, you're maybe more capable than I am. Mm-hmm. You might be able to do it. So I think that L fully believes, rightfully so, in a way, that Light, that Light is able to solve the case because because he has orchestrated it he's like you figured out the case because you orchestrated it you figured out all this information so far because it was designed for you to figure out this information and the crazy thing is that light doesn't know that light has planned for him to solve this case a light has, I am fully believed that Kira Light has played 4D chess. Someone in the Discord, like, there was a meme that was, like, light. They called it, like, it was an inverse of light. And it said, instead of light, instead of Kira, it said Shakira. And I was like, I just want to call light Shakira now. But I feel like before light lost the death note, he orchestrated this entire thing so that light could solve the case, frame the Yotsuba group, and then go back to becoming Kira. And L has figured that out. And so L's trying to find a way to prove that. But the thing that L can't wrap his mind around is how Light can act like he doesn't know. But the truth is, Light really doesn't know. And L can't realize that because he doesn't know how the memory thing works. And I like that just, oh, Boy Scout, oh, Shakira over here is just like, what? He's like, if I die, I want you to become, will you take over for me as L? And he's like, what? And then everybody's just kind of standing there and staring. So then we have um, the death note rules. If the name is written the same, if this, if written the same name on more than two death notes is completed within 0 0.06 second difference, it is regarded as simultaneous and the death note will not take effect and the individuals written will not die. So if two people write the same name in the death note at the same time, it's null and void. It does not work. Good to know. Again, the whole concept of there being two death notes, it seems interesting. And then the other rule is about the Shinigami. And that rule is basically stating that if you have, if a god of death, the god of death must at least own one death note. That death note must never be lent to or written on by a human. It's their death note. So that is interesting as well. Okay. Good to know. I feel like all these rules that come up are going to have some kind of effect later on and we just don't know about it yet. It's like, okay. 
He's like, if I die, would you take over for me as L? And so L does this under the guise that it's all an act. He's like, if Light is still Kira, and he says yes, then that means then that means he's Kira. And so, and Light's like, as long as we have this, won't we die together? And then he figures out what L's doing because Light is smart. But because Light is not Kira in this moment, he he basically reveals he reveals what L is pointing out as he's in Boy Scout mode. So he basically goes through and says, like, this is why, and he tells, he tells his father and everyone that, that El still thinks he's Kira, and so that's why he's offering this information. I do love the visual of Light with, with the Kira shadow behind him. I really like that visual, and the shadow's smiling, but El is not, but Light is not. And it kind of reminds me of Ryazaki, like Ryazaki floating behind light. It, that's what that shadow reminds me of, and it's so good. I'm like, mm-hmm. He's like, or that Kira's power has been passed on to someone else. And I have no memory that I was Kira. One of those two possibilities. And else, like, yes, that's true. If it's the first and I'm putting on an act, then these handcuffs are never going to come off. No, they are not. No, even if it was the other possibility, he probably wouldn't take them off. Ryuzaki thinks that I'm Kira. Even if that power has been passed to someone else, he assumes that I would have planned things to have it returned to me. And I love that you see his feet like just tapping like, yes. And so, yeah. So, L does believe that Light, that Light plans to get Kira's powers back. And the sad thing is, he's right. I'm sure that Light has planned on getting those powers back at some point, and Boy Scout Light just does not realize it. And he's like, in other words, he doesn't think I was being controlled. No. I passed the powers on and planned for it to come back once I've been cleared. Yep, that is exactly correct. Yes, that is exactly what's going to happen. And the sad thing is, it's probably going to happen, because riyazaki has been pretty much right about everything in this series so far. He's like, you figured out exactly what I was thinking. Yep. Ryuzaki's line of reasoning is that Light will become Kira once he steals L's position. And so then, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big thing because that's, if he took over as L, he would have access, access to the police and all the resources. Yeah. If he became L and had his position, he, he'd be unstoppable. It would be the ultimate, he says, correct. To acquire the position of L, to be able to freely control the police while being Kira in secret would be the ultimate. Yep. I could do that. No, I would do that. That's what you meant, didn't you? And he says, yes. He's like, well, what about now? He's like, you should probably know by now I'm not acting. And he says, if you were acting and trying to steal my position as L, there's no way you'd reveal your plan in front of everyone. Is that what you mean? And then Light gets kind of mad because he's like, do you think this is, do you think I'm, do you think I'm lying? He's like, I'm not lying. So, ah, uh, but, and I love that he, he grabs Ryuzaki by the shoulder and spins him around slowly. And I love this just when he spins him around and gets him on his eye level and like looks him in the eye and Elle's like, what the fudge? And he's like, even if I capture the Kira, current Kira, do you really think that I'd become Kira, a murderer? Do I look like that kind of person? And it spins over to him and they spin around in this BL of magic, in this BL rotation of magic, like they're on cups at Disneyland. Yep, mm-hmm. And Ryuzaki's like, well, yes, I do. That's what I think, and that's how you look. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh, and I just love that lights give me strength look. Elle's like, no, I do believe that you will take that power back. And I do believe you look like Kira, a murderer. You're just trying to hide it. Elle is stubborn, 
and cannot be convinced. And Light's like, okay. And then we go back to them kicking each other. And then we go back to the, it's just like, it's like that little calm. And then it's like the calm before the storm. And then they just go back to like punching and kicking one another. It's great. It's great. <laughs> and Chief Yagami's like, not again. And Matsuda's like, get off. Once is enough. I love Elle's little like defensive cat position. I love that Mogi did not even offer to stop. <laughs> but the cat position, God, it's great. Oh my God. Let's leave it at a drawl. A drawl. I love that they're, we're going to leave these two are a drawl. Yeah, because it's like light, you're not going to convince L otherwise, and L just is going to have to work to try to convince himself that that lie is there. He's like, yeah. He's like, anyways, we have to catch Kira that's in front of our eyes. I know light tries to be all badass with that line, and L's like, mm. He's like, as long as I have these handcuffs, you shouldn't have any complaints. He's like, I suppose so. We only have a month. And Matsuda's like, oh good, we can go back to our regularly scheduled investigation. And so, Daddy Yagami says, if we can use this meeting as evidence and capture the seven of them, won't the murders of criminals stop? And L's like, not again. He's like, we just explained this. He's like, why do I... L, L being impatient. L describes himself, he is desperate. He's desperate and he's also impatient. Because he knows he's right, he just has, does not have any means to prove it. So, and in this scene where he takes the sugar out, he's like, unfortunately, no. He's like, we're not sure if Kira is among those seven. So we cannot, sim if they just have a connection to him, simply, Kira will simply kill them. And he's like, he's, it's like he's going through and listing every possible disadvantage of what you're saying. He's like, no, Chief Yagami, here are all the flaws in your plan and reasoning. And this is why we can't do it. And, but he's so, he's so impatient and aggravated and desperate that he just, it just gets to the point where he just puts all the sugar into the cup. He's like, I'm just, he's like, how, how much clearer can I be? But no, he is right. If Kira is not one of those seven and they get arrested, then Kira will just kill them. And they're back to square one. So that will not work. We have to be absolutely sure Kira is among them. He's like, we have to prove that Kira is one of those seven. Or there's no point in catching them. And he just like soaks the, the thing in the sugar. Even if he is, it's difficult to determine who's Kira right now. He's like, it's too early. And I don't think he's wrong. I think if you're trying to narrow it down, arresting all seven of them, yeah. If Kira's not among them, then... Then Kira will just kill those seven and then leave or move somewhere else and they won't be able to catch them. They're back to square one. So I do agree with Elle on that. I think that they can't just arrest the seven without knowing who is Kira. I think Elle is pretty sound in that logic. Mm -hmm. And he's like, but if you can't say that he's definitely among the seven, then what's going to happen? There's still a chance the murders will stop if we arrest them. And Elle's just like, Elle just looks so depressed. He's like, it's like my dad says, there's a chance. And he's like, on second thought, I'll go after Kira by myself. He's like, he's like, none of you are listening to me. None of you are following what I'm telling you. I'm really frustrated. So fine. You all want to arrest him? Go for it. Take responsibility for that case. Have it all blow up in your face. I'm going to do my own thing. And, I, and just Kira... L being mad at this entire Kira case, L being mad is him overloading the cup with sugar. He's like, fine, I won't use any of you. You can use these headquarters, as will I. And he's like, you can do things your way, things your way and arrest them as you wish. And, they're, and you can tell, it's like a parent scolding the child. Like, oh, you think you're right? You think you know all the answers? Fine, then you solve the case. You think you can do it without me? Because like, yeah, L's like, you have said I am the greatest detective. Like, Elle's had a blow to his confidence in this episode because Light basically showed that he could be just as competent as L, And that's probably a blow to Elle's, Elle's ego. Elle's got an ego just like Light does, right? And this is a bit of a blow to it. The hilarious thing is that way back in, like, episodes 9 and 10, Ryuzaki was being the innocent schoolboy with Light, who was freaking out and losing it. And now we're seeing the reverse, where Light is being the schoolboy and Elle is freaking out and losing it. So it's a great parallel. But yeah, Elle's like, fine, 
you hired me, but you don't want to do what I say, solve it yourself. He's like, I don't want anything to do with it then. He's like, I'm not going to be made a mockery of because of your bad judgment. He's like, I'll investigate as I wish on my own. And we'll only get into arguments if we don't. Let's split up and act separately. And he's like, then you just want to figure out who Kira is, huh? And he's like, yes, this case will never be solved if we don't capture Kira. People are going to keep dying if we don't capture Kira. He's like, don't you see? I can't say that stopping the deaths of a number of people right before our eyes is meaningless. But if we don't find the truth, then Kira will appear again and the victims will increase in the end. And like, he's just, he's just put all the sugar in. So yeah, his whole thing is like, He's like, look, if we, we need proof, need proof to stop the murders. He's like, yes, Kira is the big picture. If we don't stop Kira, then there's no reason we should do this. Because yeah, we'll save like a couple people's lives, but the killing will keep on going. And he's like, I'm tired of it. So it's like, yeah, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That's kind of his logic in this. Like, we need to stop Kira. And in order to save the lives of the many, we need to focus on the few. So it's kind of, it's interesting the way that he phrases it. But yeah, I, I'm not opposed to what he's saying. He's like, no, if we don't do this right, we're not going to solve this case. And it will keep going indefinitely. We'll never solve the case of Kira and people will still keep dying. So he's like, nope, not going to do it. That's why I think it's more important to figure out who Kira is. Yep. Narrow down that one person. I'm opposed to arresting the seven men. If you want to do that, then you take responsibility for it. I'll pursue Kira by myself. We only have one month. I wonder who will be faster. And then he drags Light with him. I thought for a second, I genuinely thought he was going to let Light go. I thought he was going to unlock his cuffs and be like, you solved the case then. But no, he doesn't trust Light. He's like, I'm going to Amane. I'm sorry, Light. I know you're on your father's side, but I don't look at as he drags Light away. He's like dragging Light's like, like with his crooked arm. I can't read his handcuffs. So you're coming with me. And I love the look, the look that Yagami gives where he's like, I just goofed. He's like, I just done goofed. He's like, ah, yep. We've made L really mad. And now he's left us. He's like, nope. L's like, I'm dying. I'm done. I want to make note in this episode and the last episode, the idea of feet going up in the air, it's very Ryuk-like. And maybe I'm just missing Ryuk because it's been like six episodes since we've seen him. But I just, not six episodes, it's only been like five. It feels like an eternity. But her with those, her outfit is great. It's so very 2007. I, I'm kind of all about it. But yeah, she's like, oh, like, do we have a date today? And she's like, along with Mr. Ryuzaki. <laughs> The animation at this part is kind of wonky, but I kind of love it because it's so wonky and weird. And he's like, Misa, and he just like runs over and then gets all Captain Morgan beside her saying, do you love light? And I love that she's kind of thrown off by that at first. And she's like, well, of course I do. I want to get a better picture without the dialogue, though. Where she says, oh, yes, very much. I do love light. And he's like, but you also worship Kira. And she says, well, yes. And he's like, so who would you pick, Light or Kira? And I like that Light's sitting there, like, tugging on the handcuffs, being like, get away from her. Stop it. I love it. And she's like, well, I would pick Light, of course. She's like, what? I'm grateful to Kira, and I want to meet him, but that's not love. Definitely Light. Okay. So then with Misa, I like that we get this confirmation that with Misa, she would pick Light over Kira because she loves, she loves Light. She just admires, she just admires and respects Kira, but that is not love. Hmm. Which is funny because going back, she wanted, she kind of said the same thing to Light back when she first met him. She's like, I wanted to meet Kira, but upon meeting you, Light, I fell in love with you. And Light assumed that she just fell in love with Kira, but that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. 
And I like that Light's like, okay, like, uh, again, Light's like, I'm like I, I guess I'm going to deal with you. And Elle's just like, Light wants to catch Kira. Isn't that right, Light? And he says, yes, of course. And I love that he like gets closer and he's like, it seems that he wants to catch him. So now what are you going to do? You admire and respect Kira, but the man you love wants to catch him. So what's it going to be? What are you going to do? And she says, well, if Light wants to catch him, then I want Light to catch him. And he's like, so you would want to help Light by working with him. And she's like, yes, absolutely. On the investigation. And Light instantly knows what Ryuzaki's doing. He's like, Ryuzaki, he knows what Elle's doing. He is getting Misa involved. And now Light will not have a choice but to have her help. And she's like, yeah, I'll do anything for Light. And he's like, wait a second. And he's like, what are you thinking? I'm like, no. <sighs> And then, so Ivor's going to pose as Geraldo Coyle and tell the seven men that he learned Misa Amani might be able to identify Elle. And so Elle had brought her in for questioning because he suspected she was a second Kira, which is true. And she says, well, that is true. And he's like, if they know that Misa might know Elle, then they'll let her basically go in. They'll have her appear in their commercials and we can get closer to the company and they'll try to ask her about various things. Since Matsuda's screw up, if there were talks about using her in the commercials. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, that's true. And then I like that Light's like, no, that's going to put her in danger. It would endanger you. So Light, he does not, does not want to put Misa in danger. Which to L, which is not right, but to L. Elle's like probably, Elle probably expects that Light doesn't want to involve Misa because she's the second Kira. She has the power to kill people. And in Elle's eyes, Elle's mind's thinking, okay, Light doesn't want to involve Misa because she could be the second Kira. And if she's gone, then he'll have one less accomplice. And that's not right, but I could just see that that being what Elle is thinking, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, you're worried about me, really? And she's like, yay. And then poor, poor Light. Poor Light having to deal with this. With her like wrapped or her, her arms wrapped around him. He looks like he'd rather be anywhere else. And she's like, but this is nothing if it's for you. And that devotion is the exact. She has that same devotion she had towards him when he was Kira. And he's like, listen, Misa. If they know that you might know who Elle is, that's going to put you in danger. And he's like, no, it means that they'll use you to get that information out of you. And she's like, it's all right. I won't say anything under torture. She won't because Elle knows that she won't. Elle knows that she can withstand a lot. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yes, that is true. And Light is like, besides, Kira can control his victim's actions before death. So he could make her, there is a good chance that he might try to get her to talk and then kill her. And he's like, no, if he kills L, then he won't have any use for her. And he'd probably kill her just to keep her silent. So Light's like, no, it's a lose-lose situation for Misa. If Misa rats out who L actually is, they could probably kill her to silence her. But if not, they'll kill her anyway. So Light's like, she's in danger no matter what. And she's like, oh, I wouldn't like that. I like that. I like that. Light's like, she could die in both scenarios. And Misa's like, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> I was like... But then, Elle says, light. He wags the finger. He's like, if we win, Misa won't die. He's like, no, if we win, Misa won't die. Also, as long as we're handcuffed, we'll share the same fate. So, he says, if I die, you'll die too. In that case, Misa is the one who would grieve the most. It's either we both die or we catch Kira. I'm like, that's so extreme. But but everybody's making bold extreme moves in this, so why not? And then he's like, now which will you choose? And she's like, to catch Kira. I can't live in a world without light. And that's like both metaphorical that she's been in the darkness for so long with everything that's happened in her life that she literally needs light in her life. But it also is that she literally needs light in her life. So she said she would die without light. Fun times. And so he's like, great. 
And and Light's like, uh -huh. and he's like, yes, that's correct. And he's like, Ryuzaki, that's messed up. Yes, it is. And he's like, we have no time. I'm desperate. He's like, we have four weeks to solve this case and we don't know enough information. He's like, I'm desperate. We need to do something. Oh my God. Yeah, and then it comes out. He's like, besides, Misa Mane's... I like that he hesitates. He's like, there's the ellipses there. He's like, Misa Mane's bravery and love for you. <laughs> uh, he says his, her bravery and love for you are the greatest in the world. He's like, yep, nobody loves you as much as Misa. And then Misa gets so touched by that. And she's like, Ryazaki. She's like, I've been wrong about you all this time. And her eyes get sparkly just like they were with Kira. And just like they were with Finding Light. Like, it's that same sparkle. It's, it's crazy. And she says, I've been wrong about you this whole time. I called you a pervert and all. But you really do understand me. And he's like, well, it's not hard. <laughs> and he's like, yes, Misa is the perfect most worthy woman for light. I like that he says worthy woman. Like the word, the most perfect worthy woman for light. <laughs> Not person. Woman. And Misa gets all touched by that. And, and I love that he's like, yes. Uh, this dynamic where light is looking over like, I don't want a woman. <laughs> he just has this look on his face like, I didn't ask for this. And Elle's like, no, you didn't ask for this. And Misa's like, this is all I've asked for. And so then she she gets so excited and she's like, yay. And she gives him a kiss on his cheek. And she's like, thank you, Ryazaki. And he's just like, oh. He's like, I could fall in love with you, you know? And she's like, oh no. She's like, that's a little, no. She's like, no, how about we be friends instead? <laughs> he's like, if you go around kissing people like that, I could fall in love with you. And she's like, no, 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 we'll be friends. <laughs> She friend zones Ryazaki so hard. Like she she friend zones him to the ground. Like tackles him into the friend zone. She's like, no, 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 no. We're we're gonna be best friends instead. And he's like, yes, I've made another friend. I I love that he's like, wow. And the thing about it is, the thing about it is it's so insane, is that the friends he's made, the only two friends he's made in life are the two mass murderers, Kira and second Kira, that he's trying to find and convict. It's, it's the most messed up thing. Yeah, but he's like, yep, I made another friend. And she's like, yes, all of Light's friends are my friends. And he's like, what is happening? And then this, this image of let's all be friends is the most glorious thing I've ever seen in this show. And I laughed out loud in the reaction because Misa's all happy. Elle's like a moth being stretched. We don't see his expression. Light's expression, he looks so unhappy to be there. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. I love it. Let's all be friends. Yay. God, I love this. And she says, and I'll never betray any of my friends. Mm-hmm. With our powers combined, let's arrest Kira. This, this show, this show doesn't miss. It's so great. And I like, he's like, no, but Yag Yagami is taking a different investigative approach from us. He'll be working with his father and the others. And I like that Light's like, I love Light's angry badger face. He realizes that, that L tricked them. He realizes that L has tricked Light into joining the cause. He's like, he's like, oh, well, Misa, Light would work with us, but he's working with his dad instead, so I guess it'll just be us. And he knows that Light is not going to let that happen because even though Light is not romantically like Misa, Light is saying that he cares for her. And if he cares for her, he's not going to let L work with her alone without him supervising to make sure she's safe. So I love his angry face like, you just tricked me into working with you. And she's like, what's up with that? And his face, Elle's face, that was dirty, Ryuzaki. Like, his face is so, like, enamored. Like, he's just like, I gotcha. I don't know. The animation this episode is so bonkers. My only choice is to join your investigation now. He's like, oh, no, that's quite all right. And she's like, Light's going to be joining us. And he's like, it's not like that. I'm opposed to this investigation. It's too dangerous for you. And Elle's just sitting there like, what? God, it's great.
Mm-hmm. She's like, light. So she's like, thank you for thinking about me. And he's like, well, but let me do this. I want to be of use to you. Mm-hmm. Just like with Kira. I want to be of use to you and I want you to love me even more. It's just like we're back to where we were. We're back to where we were six episodes ago. Except now we're trying to catch Kira instead of help Kira. What? Oh my God. Plus, she says, I will glad I would gladly die for you. Mm-hmm. Right now it'll be difficult. And I like Chief Yagami is like, well, now it's gonna be difficult to rest the seven of them. Moga Mogi Matsuda, do you have any good ideas? And that's where we end the episode. Oh my god, that's wonderful. So good. So freaking good. I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah. So uh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So there we go. <laughs> so I, it's so interesting because at this point, at this point, L is, he is kind of shady. And we're seeing just how selfish L's sense of justice is. That he, he is so dead set on, on figuring out a way to prove that Light and Misa are the Kiras, that he is willing to sacrifice people. And that's kind of crazy. So it's like, I, I, L and Light and Misa are all murderers. It's just, it's just, uh, your sense of justice and your perspective, who are you siding with? I'm like, oh my God. I mean, but, but here's the thing. I do think at the end of the day, there is a difference. There is a big difference between L and Light and Misa. Misa, I'm going to kind of put off to the side here because Misa's whole deal is that she's in love with Light and when Light was Kira, she wanted to help Kira to prove her love for Light. And so, yeah, her entire basis of being a murderer was just to get Light's affection, which is not right, but that was her whole meaning behind it. With Elle and Light, there is a distinction. Light is going to keep killing people as the god Kira and is not planning on stopping. Elle is not... is letting people die to catch Kira to stop the mass killings. Now, could you argue that L has done methods in the past to catch villains that have resulted in people dying? Mm -hmm. Is that right? No. But I do think that L gets a little bit more leeway for me, a little bit, because he is trying to stop a murderer from killing more people. And, and he, in his mind, he's like, well, the ends justify the means, right? Or the means justify the end. But that's kind of what Light thinks too. So, so it's interesting. We're getting now to the point where Elle and Light are both, their sense, they both have a sense of justice and they're both willing to fight for it and do whatever means necessary to enact that justice, even if it involves like some unscrupulous means. So, hmm. But yeah, I, I don't want any spoilers, but I love the OP and ED. They're great. I'm going to have a lot of fun dissecting them the rest of the series. It's going to be fun. Um, but this is all just insanity. So we got four weeks. Four weeks to solve the Kira case and to arrest the Kira within Yatsuba and then see what happens from there. So I know there's new characters in the OP that I don't recognize. And I don't know who they are. Please no spoilers on them. I don't want to know who they are. Um, I'm sure we'll find out as we go. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. This episode was great, but please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with episode 21 of Death Note. Bye.